well, flipping on a light switch, turning on a faucet, flushing a toilet. These are everyday tasks that are still considered a luxury in many parts of the world, including a remote village in Guatemala, where 14 Indiana electric cooperative linemen earlier this year brought electricity to the homes of nearly 1,000 families, changing lives both there and here. Now at least two other states are interested in implementing this unique humanitarian effort. And for more on Project Indiana, we bring in Indiana Electric Cooperative Vice Presidents, Gavin Strantz and Jennifer Rafato. And uh, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you very Th much. This is a really incredible program. It, it, it really is. Started in, in 2012 originally. Uh, so Gavin, if you could start us uh, off, how did this idea uh, to do this come about? Well, they were looking for something to do humanitarian-wise mm -hmm. in the state of Indiana. And uh, one of the things the co-ops do best is uh, build power lines. Yeah. Well, most of Indiana's got power lines already built to it. So then they got with the International Foundation uh, through NRECA and uh, decided to go ahead and do something overseas. Mm -hmm. What was the initial kind of feeling or reaction, uh, you know, among the cooperatives in terms of the idea? I mean, it's, it's very ambitious uh, to be sure. What was the initial reaction? Most people were skeptical on yeah. how it would turn yeah. out, but the hearts of the Hoosiers are so warm, and the thought that people don't have some basic necessities they take for granted, yeah. the skepticism was only was quickly replaced by excitement, and they wanted yeah. to get involved. Yeah, and Gavin, you went. You were on the trip. Yes. Uh, talk about it. Just, just an amazing. You're in uh, one of the re most remote areas of the world in Guatemala, and you are actually electrifying a, a village. Talk about the challenges that, uh, that you faced. Well, one of the biggest challenges was actually getting up to where the village was at because, you know, the home base where we stayed was, wasn't that far away, but it, uh, in the first village that we energized, it was only about uh, nine miles from the base of the mountain to the top of the mountain, but it took us an hour and a half to drive up there because it's a dirt one-lane road all the right. way up right. with 90-degree cutbacks and switches all the way up. And then once you get up there, you had to deal with the... Uh, the elevation, you know, we're used to dealing with uh, elevation here that's not quite the same as it was down there. We were right. working six to 7,000 feet in the air. Right. So. And the heat. And the heat. And the heat in the second project because we worked, when we left here, it was about two months ago. And, you know, back then it, the weather was in the 40s and the 50s, mm -hmm. and it's, it's still that way right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. But we went down to heat that was 100 to 110 degrees, and the humidity was about 85 to 90 percent. Yeah. Doing this, obviously, you're making a difference. What, what, you're making a difference for people there, for sure. 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 What does it do to, to you and the others who, who, who went down there, just in terms of how you felt about uh, the project and what you accomplished? Well, it gives us a better appreciation of what we have here in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, you go down there and see the little that those people have and what we have and the opportunities that we have in the United States compared to them. Mm -hmm. And you think to yourself, my land, what electricity could do for those people and the young people, especially the kids. Mm -hmm. That's what really impress yeah. me. And electrifying this, this, this village, providing electricity, obviously a key first step. But this is an ongoing uh, initiative with this, uh, with this village, correct? Yes. Part of the vision for the project came about from in the 30s. We didn't have electricity mm -hmm. in the farms here in Indiana. Um, and there were a lot of issues that came with that. So they formed cooperatives through government money and brought electricity to rural Indiana. And look how we've advanced mm -hmm. in the 80 years since then. So we want that for Guatemala. Yeah. We hope they will firm the, form these electric cooperatives and then be able to work with other organizations um, like Sustainable Nutrition, for example, in Carmel to bring mm -hmm. nutrition, yeah. um, water, cook stoves, just start that ball and rolling. The, the, electives, uh, the cooperatives throughout the state are engaged in some form yes. of this, right? Every cooperative um, within the state of Indiana, 38 of them, have contributed something in the form of men, materials, or money. They're all yeah. involved in the project. Yeah. Yeah. And Gavin, as we, as we wrap up, other uh, cooperatives outside of Indiana have, have uh, uh, you've raised, the, you got their attention uh, in this unique human humanitarian effort, right? Yeah, well, uh, just recently, Ohio and, in, and Michigan asked me to come up and do a uh, talk to their people as mm -hmm. far as what they could expect when they go. So. Yeah. Project Indiana uh, is an incredible uh, project, uh, and uh, Gavin Strantz and also Jennifer Rufato, thank you, congratulations, and Gavin, an uh, incredible uh, effort. I can only imagine what that was like. Well, so, the effort was the guys that went down there to do it, yeah. you know, and that was yeah. all the people involved in the co-op, yeah. no doubt about it. Well, thanks very much. We'll continue to follow the story.